entire shire managed to simultaneously obey and defy the wishes of their king. It began when a man from that shire was called before their king. The reasons for this have been long since lost to the annals of history and are not particularly relevant to the tale anyway. What is relevant is that as the king was presenting the award, he told the man that he did not find it appropriate that one who had done the things he had done and was receiving the award he had gotten should go by the name that he was. <laughs> not wishing to delay the court any longer than it already had, the man said nothing and returned to his seat. But, you see, there was a reason why this man went by the name that he did. And that was because at no point in his life had he ever felt comfortable using another. Oh, he had tried. He had suggested other names that he could use. There had been a period where he used his surname rather than his given name. But they always felt alien, other, foreign to him. Others were quick to point out that the name he used was a shortened version of a name that was, in fact, quite period appropriate. But this name in particular he could not use, for he had used that name for 14 years. And to him it was the name associated with his childhood. It was not a happy time in his life. A time when, at best, he was too young to have a spot on the social hierarchy, and at worst he was at the very bottom of it. <laughs> this was a child, the name of a child who was ridiculed by his peers, excluded, mocked, derided. But as the cusp of adulthood loomed, he realized he had a chance to remake his life. But to do that, he would have to cast aside the previous life he had. And that meant turning aside the name of that young child. So shortly after the dawn of his 14th year, he assumed the shortened version of his name and never looked back. Those who knew him well knew this story, and they knew that they could not persuade him otherwise, that no matter what they said, no matter what anybody said, convincing him otherwise would be a fruitless endeavor. But the story does not end there, for as you recall, I will also say that the king's wishes were obeyed at the same time. For it came to pass that the young man was reading a book, and in that book he happened upon a list of names of people who lived in southern France in the 14th century. And right there, in black and white, in a book recommended by no less than the Academy of St. Gabriel, were at least five people, without even so much as an accent mark to distinguish them, who had his chosen name. And that is the story of how Steve of Turnawith managed to go against the will of his king by doing exactly what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs>